Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. It's another 4 p.m. on a Thursday evening here in the city of Lagos, our beautiful city of Lagos, and it's time for Rethinking Lagos. Captain Smart is my name, and DJ Kimpelu is in the studio again. Yeah, nice to be here again. <laughs> another wonderful day to discuss the city of Lagos. Hmm. So, DJ, how are you doing? Oh, doing great. Uh, we had a wonderful time today um, discussing with um, candidates from different political parties about the idea of building an inclusive, sustainable uh, a Lagos. Um, a Lagos that takes into cognizance the interest of everyone um, from low income to from a low income manner to medium and to high income. You know, a Lagos that is inclusive and Today, we're talking about transportation. I mean, how can we make the transportation system in Lagos um, a sustainable one? Um, there's no sustainability in everyone having to drive their own cars all over the place. What is sustainable for any city is the willingness of people to drop their cars and be able to hop on um, public transportation. Um, so... Transportation is very, very key to building a sustainable um, city, um, ability to move people in mass. So w the question to Lagosians is, what's your own idea of that sustainable transportation system in the city of Lagos? What are the things that we really need to begin to look at? I mean, is it the BRT system, the informal transportation system? Um, the waterways and co walking, walking. You no, know, we shared that one last week when I told you <laughs> that walking is a means of transportation. transportation. You know, <laughs> you know. So uh, we're going to be talking about all of that, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm not. Uh, we have someone also on the line, um, in the name of um, Mr. Yinka Jones of uh, Lagos Urban Development Initiative, um, Ludi. Lydia has been in the space of uh, studying the Lagos um, transportation space um, for well, close to four or five years now that I've known them, you know. So Yinka is also on the line to help us do justice to this. And also Lagosians out there, we would like you to call in and tell us what you think. Mm. A beautiful one. Uh, transportation is major. Uh, if you talk about Lagos, I'm sure the next big thing on your mind, apart from uh, maybe housing, yeah. is transportation and yeah. uh, it's, it's so difficult sometimes to move around and we're sharing the other day about uh, the latest one you know after brt and all of that you have the lag ride yeah uh, you actually opened my eyes to to something because ordinarily you would want to lodge that kind of an initiative but when you told me that um, if it's not targeted at the masses if it's not targeted at the masses then the purpose might as well be defeated you said look at that big space conveying maybe just one person at a time yeah that's the government uh that shouldn't be the core it, it's a good idea it is nice it's, but it's not something that uh, government should um not trying to criticize but um rather we should spend our limited resources in solving problem at scale at mass mm. you understand so every resource that you have if you say if you say your resources are limited then you solve the problems at scale you know, you are not going to invest uh, in such. Government should be at the forefront of discouraging people from using cars by providing an alternative that is attractive. Mm. Understand? Conveniently, oh, I know that if I walk, you know, an average negotiation spends 15 minutes from their house to a major bus stop. Wow. So the, that walking distance, that first mile, if you make it comfortable for me to do, I am not afraid that Oh, if I'm working, somebody's going to hit me down on the road. You know, if you make that 15 minutes convenient for me and I get on a comfortable bus and when I get to where I'm going to, the next 15 minutes I need to use to get to the next place or to my eventual destination, if it is convenient and comfortable, people will be, uh, people will be happy. Uh, people, people will jump on the option of dropping their cars. So the, the key message, in, you know, is also as if you are jumping into it already, is let us build a system that is attractive that encourages people to drop their cars. Government shouldn't. Uh, I would advise government not to be investing in anything uh, 
cars. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, 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 that in itself, even other bike hailing apps that are private ventures, they don't, it doesn't speak to sustainability, environmental sustainability. Mm. Uh, you, you, I mean, like as you said, you have one big car. How many of you are inside? <laughs> you know, but we should begin to revolutionize some things and think. Take for instance, personally, I'll tell you that why is it that if you have a car, why don't we think of complimenting people who have cars that are full? You say to people like, if you if you have your car full to the brim, if you get to the toll gate, you won't pay. Mm. <laughs> mm. You know, but that that is only when I begin to think about cars as um as a means you understand when we begin to see that so if you had done a car sharing system whereby people are encouraged to have more people you understand it's not like you're picking one person but mm. people are going on a route then everybody jumps into the car and they go so we have people also in the tech space right now who are doing bus services you know um, the, um, office bus service so in the tech space, you have several companies like that in Lagos who you, you just, you with the, on the app, you get on it and then you can join other people to ride to work. That is what we should be supporting. If at all you want to make investment or you want to look at that, you know. And again, should government really be spending so much in those kind of investments? Mm. Government should rather position itself as an enabler to make um things work for the business sector and for the people. You become a regulator, an enabler and a regulator. So your interest should be, oh, you have bike hailing apps. Mm. What should be the regulation? Oh, the drivers, are they getting what they need to get? You you now could be that intermediary that makes sure that the people who are employees and the people who they serve or they give those services to get what they need to get from from that system not a situation whereby you said you are becoming a business mm. and uh, you are also competing with uh, if government becomes a business and everything uh, uh, <laughs> so you, government should be an enabler and a regulator yeah to make sure that the masses the people get value for their service and then uh, wherever you think you need to do subventions you do subventions and cool but it's not my day today. I think Inka should <laughs> talk. <laughs> okay, Inka, how are you doing today? I'm very well. Good, good evening, everybody. Good afternoon, wherever you are. Good evening to you. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. So, did you want to you want to prompt him? Prompt him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I tell I know you want to prompt him because I, I think I know quite a number of things in, in his mind. But you can so in your in the space of your work so far, what would you say generally? What are the considerations your organization is giving to solving the transportation issue in Lagos? Assuming that we are all familiar with the transportation challenges, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much once again. Um, it, it, it's a delight to be uh, to be in the studio with you, even though I'm not there in person. I mean, physically. Uh, um, and uh, quite an interesting um, conversation about transportation. And um, I think uh, they just said quite a bit, particularly in the area of, of I mean, about the fact that I mean the role of the government in what the rule of government should be in the scheme of things as it, as the first sector transport. Look, let me just go down to what we do in the first and foremost. We the Lagos Urban Development Initiative of NGO and uh, what we do to bring people together to advocate for a more livable Lagos and transportation that you have said from the outset. One key essential uh, component of the city um, system. Now uh, we are very big on NMC, going to the fact that uh, we have a large percentage of population in Lagos that kind of um, use that mode of transportation, walking, I mean, cycling, and what have you. And so, so those people need to be considered too. And if you look at transportation generally in Lagos, it's highly or it's largely unaffordable. In Lagos, it's presently. Uh, to be uh, very, like, raw, I would say that um, an average or like 40% of, of, of 
legal and actually uh, can't afford transportation. More than 40, actually, more than 40, well, more than 40 percent can actually afford transportation. Of council stamps are not really affordable to them, and so these people need to be brought into the net uh, or brought, uh, make uh, they need to kind of uh, have access to trans public transportation. And uh, what the government should be looking at is how to kind of make this group of people also have access to public transportation in, in, in the state, rather than. Uh, trying to do everything, rather than trying to, you are a good regulator like the Javali, a good regulator, you are also in charge of uh, uh, that business, also in the business of providing services, you know. It's, I think it, it, it's just too much for the, for the government to kind of choose. Let them kind of put and kind of uh, uh, manage things from a distance, making sure that every, I mean, the thousand percent Lagos is inclusive. Like I've said, we are very big on NMT because we know a large population of the, on, in the state actually use the mode of transportation. And like the job as I said, what happens, I, want, I just want to just think, what happens when um, uh, NMT or the non motor transportation actually is encouraged in the state by providing the basic infrastructure for this, uh, for this, uh, for this mode of transportation? It's going to go a long way in making sure that people can have access, access to the basic um, urban services. People can actually access schools, people can actually access uh, um, hospital services, healthcare services, people can access their place of work and other opportunities because of this, because they, they, they don't necessarily need to get on the bus or get on, on BRT or get on whatever, um, motorized motor, uh, mode of transportation uh, that we have. So they can actually access this thing by maybe walking. For example, now, if our streets are well covered, if you have like a well, uh, uh, a conducive street for walking, I mean, I can run around my, my little environment walking. I'm encouraged to walk because, I mean, I, I'm not directly under the sun. I have maybe tree shade all around. I mean, the, the, the designated lane for me, I'm not walking and watching, watching uh, behind my shoulder that, to kind of look at who's coming. Who's coming up next to you? Oh, okay, Inka, because of time, uh, let, let's be able to cover a lot of grounds. Uh, if, if those who are in Lagos, especially people who are coming from out of the city of Lagos, they come here and they get wowed by, by the amount of space that the water in Lagos occupies. But when you look around, like if you're driving along the Third Mainland Bridge, you, you, you can count the number of boats that you can see on the water. Meanwhile, uh, Lagos could have taken advantage of the body of water all over the place to actually put more boats on the, on the water and get people moving instead of everybody being on the road at the same time. Is there nothing Lagos can do to uh, exploit this, this avenue of transportation? Of course, there's a lot of Lagos can actually, the government can actually do to kind of make uh, this a major transportation mode in the state. However, I mean, that not kind of undermined what the airport of the state has been so far. I mean, so I think presently the state has commissioned like eight large uh, capacity ferries and they've cleaned up, I mean, they've kicked off this clean up campaign on waterways and, you know, there are a number of uh, jet fees and seminars they are kind of putting in place. So the state is actually doing quite a bit in that space. However, there's still a lot to cover. There's still a lot of ground to cover in this area. Largely, uh, uh, water transport is still very expensive. It's still like uh, relatively on safety. People are still very skeptical and, uh, and very uh, uh, like careful when it comes to water, water uh, transportation safety. So it, it, there's still a lot the government can do. At Lagos State, like you have rightly said, I mean, we, we, have, we have large expanse of water bodies. And good enough, there are so many areas in, in the state that are actually connected to, to this water body. We can actually explore, it's an area we can explore to make life much easier yeah. for our people. Yeah, if, I, if I may come in there, you can, sorry, sorry uh, to cut you. Um, you know, we were ha having the same discussion about water transportation in Lagos, and Owo Shoki, for instance, came up. Um, there's a jetty in Owo Shoki, which is being used 
purely by just a private company. You understand? And um, there is no government um, presence or government approved operation of that jetty for the public. You know, so the question is, you have opportunities lying all over the place, but we are not maximizing it. Um, statistics or information available clearly shows that investment is low in that area. So, what? how should government position itself to encourage and drive um, investment in the water sector is very important. And one of the things you need to share and make available is, for instance, data on profitability. You know, and also what is government going to do to help such businesses also thrive uh, in this in that kind of situation? Take for instance, you know, you are worried as an investor uh, if you are able to push people from Ikorodu down to the island, but I'm uh, on the boat, but coming back, uh, you don't have anybody to pick up. So that looks like oh, it, it's not attractive, you know. But that is also where, because it's also important and is a growing sector, that is where the ease of government making it easy for investment to come into such places should be addressed. You understand? And people who have decided to 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 go on water, jettison the uh, congested and uh, traffic, and all of that, they they should get better subventions or or, or support you know, uh, uh, um, subsidies or, or, or that exist, you know, that is converted from the road user to the person who has decided to, to, to use the waterways. So the waterways is very big, but um, we have to start looking at the issue of cost. It's presently too expensive. And when, like we said, we are very concerned about the mass of the people, um, the low-income earners who constitute the largest percentage of Lagosians, uh, 60 to 70 percent, they can't afford whatever is going on in the water space right now. So we, we need to announce that opportunity and government has to be more deliberate in terms of being open to investment coming in and making it easier to, uh, in such a way that, okay, if you ever have private investors who are coming in, the private sector who are, who are coming in, they're not coming to put, in, put on people a lot of pressure that um, the cost of going into the business, registering for the business or getting into it, they've made it very difficult uh, from the government space, basically. Yeah, I, I agree with you perfectly. The, I think government has a lot to, to, to kind of in, in, in encouraging uh, private sector participation in, the, in, in, in water transportation. Uh, for example, I think um, one reason why it is... Uh, Quite unaffordable to most people is because of the high um, level of or, 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 or the, 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 the start of, starting off is quite expensive. You know, the initial cost has been expensive to, to start uh, water transportation business. So, if the government can actually make access to credit, if there's a policy interest to make access to credit for such people, uh, kind of uh, much easier. Then it, it encourages, and it goes a long way to kind of um, encourage participation of the public sector. Also, I mean, there's need for a more friendly and attractive policy for the private uh, investors, like when you are slightly concerned. So I kind of agree with you. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, Inka, let's let's go to the phone lines. We'll find uh, so did you? What we are expecting the calls to to start coming in? A lot of persons who say, well, uh, to drive on Lagos roads. You have to have like two hearts, yeah. You know, yeah, because they think uh, people who drive in Lagos maybe they leave their minds at home or something. Yeah. Okay, let's just just talk to this caller. Hello, good evening to you. Yeah, good evening. Welcome. Tell us your name and where you're calling us from. My name is Emmanuel. I'm calling you from VR. Go ahead, sir. Okay, I just want to ask. It's not uh, a hidden thing that uh, there was a fire incident at Akwangbo some months ago, and to date. We are all suffering coming to the island. Is there no timeline when they're going to repair that portion of the bridge, or even rehabilitate the portion going towards Leventis to ease the traffic on that bridge? That's my question. Mm. Yeah. 
Well, I know what you're about to say, Captain Smart. I'm not an official <laughs> of the <laughs> government. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But because, um, because that incident has actually put a lot of pressure yeah. on the Third Midland Bridge. Yes. Uh, but I think the uh, the government authorities will be able to answer. But that speaks to generally to the issue of how we respond to issues of maintenance, emergencies, and all of that. Even in uh, Ojota, there is this point that is just broken. Mm. You understand? And uh, you have this situation that that thing has been causing a whole a lot, lot of, of traffic, traffic yeah. for a very long time. Mm. So things like you know improper maintenance, poor maintenance of our roads, uh, responding on time. You know, uh, sometimes when you travel abroad and you see them trying to fix a particular, they say pothole. There's a pothole here. Mm. I mean, when, when you see what they call a pothole and they're working hard to fix it. Hello, these are some of the issues mm. that we have. Hello, good evening to you. Yeah, good evening. Thank, Thank you for you staying on the line. Yeah, what's your name, sir? My name is Abiodun from Ulipoji. Go ahead, sir. Yes, my question, my question is when the convener said uh, if adventure, if people can be helping people on the road, like if, if the bus is full, or your car is full, maybe there will be a, maybe he's, he's just suggesting that there might be a wave off at the toll gate and all that. You know, considering the security issues facing the country right now, it, it, it might not be welcome that way. It's easier said than done. Yeah, but, I agree with you. It's not a, it's not a, it's not that something that I'm saying substantively uh, as it were. Um, but uh, assuming, you know, that uh, all people, but carpooling as a culture, is something that we should also encourage. Um, you find people who live in the same area and they're going to the same destination. This mm. is just behavioral change on the side of the people. Mm. Uh, so some of the issues that we battle with are also things of the mindset, you know, um, where everybody wants to be a big man and everybody wants to show up big. I mean, why are you, we're all going, we're all in the same area, we're all going to the island. Why don't we just have that culture and that practice of um, carpooling, knowing fully well that we are helping to save our environment? You mm. know, that's so on the on the on the level of um, of um, uh, relationship, uh, it, it, it's something that is possible. But also, we have it actually uh, with um, bus hubs that we are having now, with staff buses. You know, you go on the app, you're verified. Uh -huh. And you'll join a ride with uh, um, other people. And uh, we've not had any issues so far, at least none that I know of, you know. But it's a cultural thing that we need to encourage. Mm. And also we should find a system to compensate or, or appreciate or um, give something back to recognize such actions. Mm. Carpooling is something that is still very much possible. Mm. Is Rethinking Lagos on 92.3 Inspiration FM? You can join us. We are talking about uh, the transportation system in Lagos today. Uh, you share your experience with us. Are you a road user? You are a car owner? You drive on Lagos roads? Perhaps you use uh, the ferry system in Lagos? Uh, let's talk transportation as far as Lagos is concerned today. Of course, when we're talking about transportation, the roads will have to come uh, into scrutiny today. 0700-923-923-923. That's 0700-923-923-923. You can send us a message on WhatsApp, 0817-313-6193. Uh, Deji, what you were talking about, uh, this carpooling, it's yeah. not even maybe people who who are living in the same area yeah. even sometimes families you find a husband and a wife yes they are working on the island they yeah. live on the mainland yeah they come in two different cars yeah uh, they they leave the house at the same time yes. and get home at the same time uh, but, they, but they drive different cars yes mm. so take for instance now what could be very just what could have led them to do that is probably they work um funny enough they may be just working uh, like um um, streets apart. Streets apart. Mm. You understand? So there's a commute that the other person probably has to do for like uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Mm. And they just consider that experience not good enough. Like, ah, I'll have to walk down to our office and all of that. Blah, 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 blah. You know, but it, it just speaks to the fact that it's not something that we've been considering. Mm. But 
the more we make the environment like yinka is trying to say you know it, it sounds somehow when you begin to start having conversation about walking mm. and people never really think about it like okay walking yeah walking should be made easy and made um, pleasurable for the people who live in the city you see what led to the influx of okada and marias is because uh, you never had a good system where people can easily walk on on the road so they rather just want to up on a bike and just move move ahead so all those things were things that uh, people developed as self-help but you go to a whole lot of european countries you have to take a long walk a whole long walk to get to a lot of places you know but it, it speaks to the fact that we so when you were talking about the mmt non-motorized transportation policy as a matter of policy Every road built in the city of Lagos must and should make provision for a very decent amount of uh, comfort for the people who are walking and who are cycling. Cycling is not just a fancy thing. You know, we have lots of uh, cycling clubs in the city of Lagos. You understand? And you see them every day. They go on the road and, and you have to see a situation whereby a car uh, a car will have to be ahead of them to protect them. Yeah. You know, people are not even aware that the, the, there's a group of people who are called cyclists mm. who, who mm. has also the right to the road. You know, but it should be a daily thing. It should be a, a thing that we make provisions for, oh, uh, and we make it convenient to be done. Yeah, and attractive as well. And safe. Mm. Safety is very key. So the whole idea. So like what we are talking about is. What are the things that we need to do for people to drop their cars? Yeah. And definitely train is one mode of transportation mm. that moves people en masse. Now, in the city of Lagos, we have the red and the blue line, line. that is uh, ongoing. And um, by plan, there are other four lines. There's the green line, there's the purple line, there's the brown line. And that, the yellow line. Uh, and I think the yellow line. Yeah. There are about four lines, mm. you know. But looking at it down the line... Uh, We've spent how many years trying to build two lines? It's been quite tough for us. So, like she said, there are some di- there, there, there is direction in terms of what we need to do and the political will to pursue it. I mean, should it have taken us this long to be able to... None is functional as of now, but we hear that one will be ready by next year. So, if it has taken us this long um, to put together two... How long will it take us to be able to fix the remaining four that we are proposing? Even the four, is it sufficient? The remaining four to add to the two that you're doing presently, is it sufficient for the city of Lagos? In comparison to other cities of its capacity and the number of people, how many rail lines do they have? We are still talking about maybe a proposal of to solve the problem, nothing less than an additional 15 rail lines. Mm. And the and the population keeps increasing. And the population the keeps increasing. And on one side, you're saying investment in this um, sector is is very heavy, and government uh, will always still tell you that we don't have money. And the big problem and the challenge that we keep having is that whenever okay, you have to do this big project, and you have to bring in the private sector. Mm. Under what terms and conditions are you bringing them in? Is it going to be another uh, unaffordable means of transportation? What is going to be the cost? The lady mentioned the jetty, oh, it's being run by the Lagos state government. At what cost? A jetty, a boat jetty. How much will you in a corridor do? Mm-hmm. And you have to ride to the island. How much is it? <laughs> How much are you paying? So these are heavy infrastructure that requires a whole lot of money. And the approach uh, of bringing the private sector, which we always say, bringing the people factor. You understand? How is government going to engage a contractor or, or the private sector in such a way that the burden is not passed on to the people again? Mm. You understand? So definitely rail is, is a big solution to Lagos transportation, but there's a whole lot of question about it. Mm. How are we, we going to do it? The cost. What are they running on? 
gas is it the gas that is scarce or wh whatever what 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 is the real system is what is it going to really run on that at the end of the day is going to be affordable for people the reason why the issues of carpooling came up with that the reason why they came up is okay what are the immediate things so you have to know what so you can't so you can't tell me that the solution of the problem to the problem is something there are long-term solutions and there are short-term solutions you know there are some things that we can begin to practice now she made mention of the um millwares and the downfalls and that, that's the informal sector mm. which is critical yes there's the lagos bus reform but the direction that we have gone is to provide 500 mini buses to replace how many several thousands of yellow buses that you have in the system you understand you begin to ask yourself so how do you want to do this you know but i, I guess you have a call <laughs> okay i think uh, we're also fast running out of time yeah uh, there's an initiative um uh, yes our friend has come to to promote here yeah the, okay so there's an initiative uh, and so we have um um uh, dennis here um from the africa cycling foundation um the, the, so we, we've been talking about the the need for us to be to drop our cars and I think the, the, there's a day coming up that they're organizing. Uh, Dennis, feel free to speak about it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, um, Captain Smart. Thank mm -hmm. you, um, Deji, yeah. for having us today. Today is incidentally the World Car Free Day. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Um, globally, every 22nd of September is a day set aside to encourage motorists, road users to keep their cars at least for a day like this, um, for three reasons. One, to save the environment. Two, to promote non-motorized transport, which has been part of this conversation. And then three, to also create advocacy for road safety. And these are all very critical issues. We're having the first one in Lagos State. But let me quickly talk on the so three. So I, I was supposed to drop my car on the mainland and walk to the island. Well, you, you can't walk that long. I mean, you can cycle, you can cycle, you okay, can pick cycle. up your bicycle and, okay. and cycle. So, mm -hmm. But the whole idea is, when you don't, um, in Nigeria, for example, and many African countries where you have um, what you call Tukumbo vehicles, mm -hmm. second hand, the damage done to the environment is largely due to um, fumes and exhaust from the vehicles, automobiles. Mm -hmm. It's doing a lot of damage to the climate, to the environment, which many of us are really, really not aware of. And if you notice now, there are a lot of effects to climate change that are already coming here. Rains are no longer like we used to have them. And um, we're not having drought here, but maybe we're, we're prone to having um, floods in this part of the country. There are a lot of damages that fumes and exhaust from the vehicles are doing to the environment that we're really, really negligent of, ignorant of, or maybe not just paying attention because we want to, like Deji said earlier, feel big or whatever. That's for the environment. So a day for Car Free Day, create that awareness, talk about what the government and what stakeholders, what organizations could do to really, really educate people and change the behavior the mindset towards your vehicles mm. secondly is about non-motorized transport um system the non-motorized transport um prioritizes mass transport like has also been talked about however it also gives priority to walking and cycling and sharing of the road and uh, on a day like this for car um yeah world car free day you create awareness about the use of non-motorized transport the implementation of the policy the upgrading of um, the existing um, uh, um, activities in regards to non-motorized transport. By the way, in Lagos, we, we spend a lot of hours in traffic. Sedentary movement affects mm. us. No, 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 no physical activity. But when you walk, it's good exercise. When you cycle, it's good exercise. It's good for the brain. It's good for, 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 for the health. Mm. You know, so a day for like this carefree day, Create all of those awareness, which many people either take for granted or are not aware of. Mm. So when are we having the, the last mm -hmm. one is the last one is road safety. Just um last year, the Federal Road Safety in Lagos released a shocking data of how many people died in 2021 and how many fatal accidents we had. 100 plus and 600 and something. These are all being caused by vehicles, cars on the road. But it's not all about cars. So in Lagos, we're having an event. Mm. Um, the World Car Free Day in Lagos is coming up. This um, Car Free the World Car Free Day has been happening in other cities. It mm. has a long history. But in Lagos, you know how hard it is for people not to use their cars. This will be the first. So we're only looking at it at Alausa, Governor's Drive at Alausa, just that area. It's about um 600-meter road that will be cordoned off the use of vehicles on that day. And then um, we have guests, we have music, we have dance, we have cycling, we have school children come around, we have 
government representative. We have private stakeholders coming. We have um, yeah people to even support the program. You know, just to create that awareness, the advocacy, and then pass the information on Car Free Day. Mm. Yeah. On the need for us to drop our cars. And and, and it, this has been organized by um, a group of NGOs. Um, Lagos Urban Development Initiatives at the forefront. You have Psychology Cycling Club. You have the African Cycling Foundation. You have Africa on the Rise. And then you have um, the Girl Bike Club. In conjunction with um, Lagos State Government, of course, Ministry of Transport is the coordinating ministry all for, right. for all that. Uh, mm. that okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have run out of time. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and another, oh, oh, my God. I didn't see it. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 So, so it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's basically the call for us to be on this part of sustainability mm. and uh, for, for our government to be a, a little bit more, let us be a little bit more deliberate in um, taking the sustainable path. Um, w- sometimes we run off with this concept that um, we need to create more roads. Creating more roads never solve traffic problems, but behavioral change, institutional change, the need to look at the private and the informal sector to rejig it. Um, you know, the, the government changed uh, the name, moved from NULT to Lagos Parks. The question to government is that how has that really changed that sector? Is it a name change that that sector needs or a structural change? What is, what is government doing with its leverage of relationship with um, that group to make transportation more convenient for Lagosians? Like we said, they cover at least 45% on their own, mm-hmm. which is a whole lot. And that is a very key area in transportation in the city of Lagos. So reforms need to actually be clearly implemented and those people need to be carried along and they're also retrained and re- restructured in mm-hmm. some way. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of the program this Thursday. We're back here next Thursday at 4 p.m. Hoping that you join us at that time. Let's keep Lagos uh, very safe. Let's keep it sustainable. Let's make it livable. Thank you for listening. You